This is probably the biggest AI news of the year. China likely now has a GPU which is CUDA compatible. They broke cover with what looks like a CUDA compatible GPU, Penghua number 3, and if that holds up, the CUDA wall is now finally cracking. The card is Fenghua number 3 and the implication is huge. Not another spec sheet flex, but a realistic path to run our existing CUDA targeted stacks like PyTorch builds, custom CUDA ops, attention kernels without months of porting. That flips the script on who gets to train, fine tune and serve the biggest models today using hardware we couldn't practically touch yesterday. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. I have been covering lot of cards coming from China and always the main question is if it is CUDA compatible. And the answer so far is no and that means that we cannot really run most of the AI workload on these Chinese GPU cards. But that story is now eventually changing. The card Fenghua number no. 3 is seem quite promising. It's engineered to hit where modern AI lives, memory capacity, operator coverage, and pragmatic workflow features. If you go back in the history a little bit, Nvidia didn't win AI just by shipping fast silicon. They built an ecosystem. CUDA became the common tongue for kernels, profilers, libraries, and deployment tooling. That locked in years of momentum. Rivals could show strong raw hardware, but the lack of CUDA level compatibility meant missing kernels, brittle wheels, and endless porting. That's the backdrop. Fenghua number three steps onto the stage by claiming CUDA compatibility while pairing it with a fat pool of HPM and a feature set which will impress you a lot. If you look at this table, this gives you a whole picture. Fenghua number three has a feature set that acknowledges how AI actually is shipping. It needs long context, quantized inference, fused kernels, synthetic data generation, and high fidelity validation in fields like legal, medical, and industrial imaging. And the story goes beyond that. <clears throat> if you look here, the main salient feature is 112 GB plus HPM. That's the headroom you feel immediately. And I will tell you one very, very interesting implication, which I believe is going to happen in the near future at the end of the video around that HPM. That, in my opinion, is the real deal here. Anyway, we'll get to it. So if you look at the table, you will see this HPM would enable fewer CPU offloads, cleaner KV cache residency, and more freedom to stretch sequence length and batch size on 30 to 70 billion models. The single GPU uh, could really run 32 billion or even 72 billion parameter models. And that is where one device might be viable for substantial inference and adapter style fine tuning. If you look at the other specs, they are also quite interesting, but for me, HPM stands out. CUDA compatibility is the adoption hinge. If common CUDA labeled ops resolve and our hot kernels execute without surgery, you, we are not really rebuilding our platform. We are not even um, resurfacing it. We are only validating performance. RT blocks matter for synthetic data like NERF or GS path traces scenarios that increasingly fuel perception and multimodal training. This uh, uh, YUV 444 plus multi 8K display pipeline plus native DICOM makes human in the loop review more faithful for radiology. So you can see not only it is covering AI, but also a lot of other industries, including radiology, industrial inspection, and even pixel critical CAD overlays. Because remember, GPUs before this AI boom were mainly focused in that direction. Also, there is a risk V control path that hints at more flexible firmware and scheduling for research clusters, juggling odd job. Now, if you look at other um, 
interesting bits from their website, which you can, I will drop the link in video's description. It has claimed compatibility with CUDA, but it is only real if today's LLM and Diffusion hot paths are supported. That includes flash style attention, page attention, group query attention, rotary embeddings, fused MLPs, layer norms, and the growing universe of quantized matmols that keep latency and power in check. Another thing is that real LLM systems lean hard on FP16, BF16 mixes, and static graph captures. So this is where my worry is that, you know, as long as it supports all of that, only then it would make sense. Now, aside from these technical details, for me, practically, the challenge to CUDA and status quo is the main thing. This new card is targeting the adoption layer. If CUDA labeled ops resolve cleanly and the driver runtime behave under long stack loads, all the teams can validate throughput latency and stability without rewriting their infrastructure. That creates a credible plan B for inference fleets. If you have performance efficient uh, fine tuning workflows and multimodal stacks, and if this introduces any, um, even I would say 70% of the performance like existing CUDA, then I think it will be a pass in my eyes. Now, as far as pricing and timing is, is concerned, uh, to be honest, I couldn't find any specific on their website, but from social media and a few other sources, which are closer to this company, they say the tentative release date is around March next year because they still need to figure out few things. Also, the pricing would be around 3000 US dollars to 4000 US dollars of this card. I believe that is going to, you know, come down a lot. Another thing which I believe is going to happen, which is more important, and I'm not really fussy about this card, I think given how Chinese labs are working and how they have this overarching umbrella of government, which you can call it bad or good, depends on perspective, that is going to combine the efforts of this company, maybe just maybe with Huawei's cards and other Chinese labs, which are working day and night to produce something, uh, you know, decent enough in comparison to Nvidia. I think if, and the only thing they're lacking is HPM. If these guys combine their HPM with Huawei's design, I think we might have something really, really challenging very, very soon, even before next March. That's it. I also want to introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are Agent. That is the first multi-agent workforce in the world, which empowers you to build, manage and deploy a custom AI workforce that can turn your most complex workflows into automated tasks. Again, Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member as that helps a lot. Thank you for all the support.